Thank you, thank you all. Now, eight years ago, when Robin Harper became the first Green parliamentarian in the UK, the party provided a very distinct voice in Scottish politics. But now, organic, recycled, sustainable ideas are the language of the mainstream. There's nothing radical about renewable energy or cutting carbon emissions anymore, and voters can easily get a bit of green from the party they normally vote for. This may be a success for the environmental movement as a whole, but does it make a separate Green Party redundant? I'll be asking their campaign organiser in a moment. But first, a quick look at the election manifesto they published today. Won't you tell me something more? The Green Manifesto contains a series of pledges that if the party ends up with any influence, they hope to initiate in the next parliament. They promise to tackle climate change and cut pollution every year, to deliver world-class public transport, not road and airport expansion to support local business and social enterprise and regulate supermarkets, to keep the NHS and water public and reverse rail privatisation, to say no to Trident and nuclear power and to invest in renewable energy, to tackle poverty, provide warm, affordable, energy efficient homes and to stop demonising young people while defending civil liberties and promoting equality. There was slightly more detail beyond the headlines for example, they would not talk to any party with a commitment to renewing nuclear power. They'd replace council tax and business rates with a land value tax. They'd introduce a target of meeting all electricity needs from renewable energy by 2050. And they'd back a referendum for and support Scottish independence. First vote green. First vote green. But with all the other parties now pushing green issues, is the Green Party's manifesto really, well, green enough? Well, Mark Ruskell of the Greens joins me now. Well, Mark Ruskell, what about this point that, that, in a way, very flattering for you, some of your ideas have now become so mainstream that there is much point in voting Green? Well, you know, you only have to look at the agenda of the other main parties in this election. They're all pushing a huge expansion in motorways. They all want to travel uh, the growth of aviation. And these are all policies that uh, will mean that we cannot tackle climate change in Scotland. What we're putting forward today uh, through this manifesto is a costed programme of pledges to reinvest some of the money that's being spent on white elephant road building programmes into giving uh, commuters a genuine public transport alternative. We're the only party doing that in this election. We're the only party saying that we're prepared to make the right decisions to tackle climate change. But everyone change. is saying they'll tackle climate change. Well, they're all saying they're going to tackle climate change, but they don't have, actually have the policies to do that. Yes, only the Green all of Party them are saying, actually does. Well, all of them are that. saying everyone else says they've got the policies to tackle climate change. Only we have got the policies to do it. Well, they might say that on one day, and then the next day they're saying, OK, let's spend £500 million on the M74, £400 million but, but on the M74. But, for example, da David peripheral. Miliband would argue We're that... We're prepared to actually make sure, the choices. But, but and David the Miliband investment. would argue that the, this, the European carbon trading scheme that the UK government has just been rejigging is more important than anything you propose in your manifesto. Well, you know, we're looking at the international perspective as well, but, you know, let's look at the, the recent changes that have happened to that trading uh, scheme. They've included <coughs> aviation. It's not going to result in a significant cut in emissions. We need to make some hard choices here, and what we're saying is start cutting some of those road building programmes, start giving folks sitting in traffic jams genuine public transport alternatives. I haven't heard another party in this election actually promise the same thing yet. Now, you, you said today that you won't negotiate with any party which backs new nuclear power stations. Mm. Um, I'm just curious, uh, would you... I, Let's say you're in a position either to prop up a minority government or have some sort of pact or be in a coalition mm. or whatever, um, which, if you believe some of the polls, is, is mm. not out of the question. What about parties that say they will extend the lives of Scotland's existing nuclear power stations? Well, the, the, the red line that we've set in this election is that we don't want to see any new nuclear power stations in Scotland in the next uh, four years. New what, ones? What, yeah, what we want but to see... But what about extending well, the what we want to see That's is what's a, been talked okay, about. OK, what we want to see is a phased withdrawal of nuclear power. We've got a target of 70% no, renewables okay, by the, 2020. I know, but I, I know that's what you want to see. Withdrawal. I'm not asking what you want to see. I mean, you've said you won't negotiate with any party. You, you wouldn't support any party which wanted mm. new nuclear power stations. Mm -hmm. If, for example, the Labour Party said, we want to extend the life of uh, Torn S or Hunterston, um, but we're not going to build any new ones, you wouldn't support that. But, but would you support a government which said that, or would you rule that out? 
Well, that's not an issue for the next four years. There is no proposals to extend the life of a nuclear power station in the next four years because they're not coming to the end of their life in the next four years. What we've got to negotiate on, I think, is a phased withdrawal of nuclear power. Clearly, there are issues about how we bring in new forms of renewables, such as wave and tidal, to match the particular uh, function that nuclear plays within our electricity generation mix. But, but we the, believe that sorry, that's the, the issue of extending the life may well be on the agenda politically, um, if for no other reason that some others in Scotland might want to to use it to fend off the idea of building a new nuclear power station here. So what I'm really asking you was, would you rule out? supporting a party that was in government that said, yeah, we'll extend the life of nuclear power stations, or would you not see that as a red line in the same way as you'd see new nuclear build as a red line? Well, I think we'd have to get a clear indication from that party that this is part of a phased withdrawal. Um, nuclear is coming to the end of its life within the next okay, 10 to 15 right. years. So, so, so you know, you, you th consider there that. needs to be, I mean, okay, first, okay. Gordon, there needs to be an energy strategy for Scotland. Okay. We don't uh, have just, that. Just we're running out of time. I'm just curious as well. If you were in a position, again, to form a pack for government or whatever. Mm. Uh, which of your positive policies, the ones that are in your manifesto, mm. would you see as the most important to implement? If well, you were given two or three things okay, and they well, said, look, we'll do this if you support us. Sure. Well, what we've done today is we've launched a number of key pledges. And, you know, they've ranged from climate change to tackling the root causes of antisocial behaviour. Right, but so, we are running so out of time. Just, just give okay, me a couple well, of ones that you would see as absolutely crucial. climate change is a top priority for us. So we'd have to look at the programmes that are being put forward in other manifestos. They need to tackle climate change. They need to accept the key green demands that we're going to be making in selection. But we're also concerned about small business. We need to support small business. We're also concerned that we uh, get get to grips with tackling the root causes of antisocial behaviour rather than demonising young but people. But these are general so themes, have a, you see, everyone would agree with that. Sure, but we have specific policies. Today we launched, for example, uh, the need to uh, double the uh, children's hearing, the budget for the children's hearing system All right. in Scotland. So there, there's lots to negotiate after the election, Gordon. All right, Mark Ruskell, thank you very much indeed. A very quick look at tomorrow's front pages. The Herald reports more...